Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Environment and Planning Committee meeting of Monday, the 12th of September. I'd like to declare the meeting open at 7.03 p.m. and thank you all for coming. And I have to say it's lovely to see so many people in the gallery, gallery tonight. It's been quite some time since we've had um, such a turnout, so thank you. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet that is the Bidigal people of the Eora Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to any First Nations people who may be here tonight. Uh, apologies, I think we have all of our councillors here tonight, Ms Bishop, for the committee. Yes, no, no apologies, thank you. Uh, notice of live streaming of the committee meeting. Staff and the public are reminded that this meeting is being recorded for minute taking purposes and is also being webcast live on Council's website. This recording will be made available on Council's website. The coded meeting practice. The order of business is as shown in the agenda, which has been made available. Staff and public are reminded that this meeting is open. Doors to the meeting room are, left to, are to be left open unless the meeting moves into a closed or confidential session, according to section 15 of the code of meeting practice. Council's code of meeting practice prohibits the electronic recording of meetings without the express permission of council. <coughs> Mobile phones must be turned to silent during the meeting. Disclosures of interest. Do any councillors have any interest to declare? Yes, I've had a special disclosure, so I should have a copy of it. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor Jamison. That's been recorded, has it? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Do we need to give a reason for that? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Councillor Jamison needs to indicate what the disclosure is and what for, mm, what right. item. Yes. It's my microphone. Sorry, I'll just bring it up and read it, I think. So it's item ENB 028-22, the Mortal Master Plan. Yes. Um, so do you want me to read the whole thing or how does it, what do I have to through you, Madam Chair, to um, Councillor Jamison, if you just need to outline the reason you've identified as having a conflict and whether it's pecuniary, non pecuniary, significant or non significant. Okay. So the special disclosure is regards to pecuniary interest. That's my address, address of effective principal with place of residence, which is 8 Carrington, Mortdale, 8 Carrington Avenue, Mortdale. Um, that's basically, I live in the Mortdale Master Plan area. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Jamison. Uh, no other disclosures, councillors? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, public participation on items on the agenda. We have five speakers tonight registered uh, for the meeting. I would remind the speakers that speakers have a three minute time limit. At the first sound you hear, that indicates you have one minute remaining. At the second sound, please conclude your comments. And we'll move on to our speakers now. Our first speaker is Catherine Ford, who will be addressing us in, in person. That's on item ENB 028-22, the Mortdale Master Plan, consideration of options and preparations of uh, planning proposal. Ms Ford. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. I'm here representing the vast majority of Mortdale residents. I request that the committee not adopt any of the four options presented to you tonight, but instead resolve to proceed with a revised master plan that encompasses both the Mortdale RSL site and Council's Cook Street car park into the B2 commercial zone, all with a four-storey height limit that preserves the council at the, the village atmosphere and helps guide the revitalisation of the Mortdale Local Centre. Mortdale residents engaged their own urban planner to examine the existing 1.5 is to 1 floor space restriction set down in Council's 2020 LEP for the B2 zone in Mortdale. His expert opinion is that this floor space restriction can only realistically achieve a two-storey height limit to the existing shops. 
increase the floor space to approximately two is to one plus, and it will be possible to provide an extra two floors of shop top housing along Pitt Street and Morts Road within the existing shopping precinct. Can I point out to councillors that within 800 metres of Mortdale Station, we have the most diverse range of housing choice in the whole LGA. Single dwellings, hundreds of medium density villas and townhouses, dual occupancies, over 1,000 home units in three-storey walk-ups, mixed commercial residential units, boarding houses, and now the opportunity to, pro to provide hundreds of shop top housing. Georges River Council is well ahead of the state government's housing targets, excuse me, to reach 14,000 new dwellings by 2036. At present, you have created 13,000 new dwellings with only 1,000 required to meet that target in the next 14 years. Georges River Council may, may be short on its uptake target set by the state government, but this shortfall is more likely to do with market confidence, a two-year pandemic, no immigration and rising interest rates. If council rezones the RSL site and the council car park to B2 with a four-storey height limit, this will also satisfy your 2020 commercial centre strategy in meeting its jobs and growth target of an extra 6,600 square metres of commercial floor space for the Mortdale Shopping Centre precinct in 2036. Mortdale residents urge councillors to resolve to adopt a revised lo Mortdale Local Centre Master Plan that truly reflects the village character of Mortdale, guides its, revi guides its revitalisation and is a blueprint for all our local centres within Council LGA, one which meets the objectives of Council's own local st st strategic planning statement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Our next speaker is Brent Davis, who is also speaking on ENB 028-22, the Mortdale Master Plan. Brent, if you'd like to come forward. And you, again, you have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. I've lived in Mortdale since 2003 and in the area my entire life. I'm here tonight because I want to appeal to you in the interest of creating a sensible and sustainable plan for the Mortdale community into the future. My concern is that the scale of development proposed for the Mortdale RSL site is not a responsible addition. I'm in no way a NIMBY, but our backyard isn't big enough. Mortdale's infrastructure and lack of proximity to major roads does not accommodate a development of this size which will place a huge additional strain on resources. I do not oppose development that is suitable for Mortdale. The Save Mortdale Village Group has come up with what I consider to be a reasonable alternative proposal for both this site with a four-storey limit and the Mortdale Master Plan in general. The alternative proposal is supported by sound town planning principles Town planning should not be dictated by where developers think they can make a profit, and I ask you to represent the community that elected you. The scale of development proposed by Mordal RSL has its place, but it needs to be in an area with infrastructure to support such a high density. Mordal is already bursting at the seams. Just try crossing Mort's Road as a pedestrian during the peak time of the day. There are more suitable places for high rises, even if they don't fit in 100% with developers' profit motives. I also question the assumption that new residents will not have cars and not impact traffic flow is highly unrealistic. Also new, more suitable areas with high rises have even proven to be cautionary tales of development without sufficient infrastructure. I cite Wentworth Point as an example, which was documented recently in the Sydney Morning Herald article titled, the Sydney suburb is the perfect place to live, so why do people want to move out? On a personal level, this will be the beginning of the end for the Mortdale community, a place I have chosen to make my home and is a great community for families and older adults to age in peace. Let's not push out our community members by destroying the Mortdale environment with inappropriate development. This is a suburban area, not urban. And I ask again, who and what will you represent in your deliberations? The people of your community are watching, the media are watching, and I ask you to represent our community and not support the Mordal RSL proposal as it stands. 
a more moderate approach is needed for Mortdale that conforms to sound town planning, such as the four-storey development I've mentioned previously. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Our next speaker is uh, Pram Pile, who will be addressing us remotely again on ENB 028-22 on the Mortdale Master Plan. Pran, are you online? Yeah, I think what we might do is, is come back to um, Ms. Pele and we'll go on to our next speaker who is addressing us in person, I believe, uh, Mr. Norman Elias, also speaking on ENB 028-22, the Mortdale Master Plan. Uh, Mr. Elias, if you'd like to come forward, thank you. Good evening, councillors and committee members and ladies and gentlemen. Um, as a resident of Mortdale, I'm in opposition to the preferred option one of the planning proposal for Mortdale Centre and the proposed uh, options in the Mortdale Master Plan. Since I last spoke at Council on April 26 this year, I stated then as I am now, Mortdale Master Plan must include the planning proposal of the Mortdale RSL, as it falls within the Mortdale Local Centre, which is part of the Mortdale Master Plan. By allowing the planning proposal to amend the George River LEP 2021, prior to the master plan being progressed, will set the precedence of the remainder of Mortdale Town Centre to be built to the same heights as Mortdale RSL proposed to be for mixed at the time. Uh, not in keeping with the Mortdale village feel. Now in your survey of the 165 survey responses on your say website to the public exhibition of the draft, uh, draft master plan, 61% were not supportive of any changes to the area. 72% were not supportive of housing diversity as they did not want to see high-rise apartments in the Mortdale Centre. Mortdale already has housing diversity, as has been previously spoken by the previous speakers. 46% were not supportive of street closures, public domain upgrades, active transport strategy and green links. Of the 185 community members that made a submission by email or your say relating to the draft plan, the vast majority of submissions, approximately 88%, strongly oppose the exhibited draft master plan, which resembles in various parts the preferred options. Uh, in the meeting of the Georges River Local Planning Panel on March 4, 2021, relating to the Mortel RSL planning proposal, it was found that the planning proposal lacks site-specific merit. The report goes on to say it will set a precedent for other B2 local centres to request a B4 mixed use zoning leading to commercial centres hierarchy issues. The proposal does not provide adequate consideration of public domain, traffic and parking issues. The proposed development demonstrates a poor response to the context of the subject site and its locality due to the proposal built form and scope. Now, in a letter dated to the leader last year, 26 July, from the Mortdale RSL President Jeff Denyer, he complained that the club has never canvassed the idea of a 15-storey building, as has been quoted by some misinformed parties. Clearly, this would be unacceptable to the local community, including our own members. He concludes his letter of complaint by saying, now that Mortdale Master Plan has been released for exhibition, we look forward to working with the plan to gain a financially viable outcome for our members. It's important for all to understand that if the club is forced to close, the land will almost certainly be sold off to a private developer with no benefit to the local community. So there was no claim of a 15-storey building, and I don't believe a 13-storey building that was proposed at the time would be any more acceptable to the members or local community. As they, um, yeah. So Mortdale RSL has shown it's not working with the community or the plan as they have bypassed council and the local planners rejections by lodging their planning proposed directly to the state planning department for a more favourable outcome, circumventing public consultation and local, local planning controls. The surveys and submissions clearly show what residents want for their local area, yet have been ignored by council proposing an option not much different from the master plan draft and supporting the Mortdale RSL by not including it within the Mortdale master plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elias. Uh, should we check if um, Ms. Pillay is online? Hello, Pran Pillay, are you online? Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, this, I'm Catherine Lansbury, I'm the chair of the Environment and Planning Committee. Would you like to go ahead and, and give us your um, submission? Yes, um, 
I'm a resident of Cook Street, Mortdale, and I'm really concerned about the master plan. And from my, I've got some feedback. Um, I'm just concerned about any master plan um, that has um, high density um, and high building heights. Um, and my concern relates to one. The first concern is traffic congestion. Um, you know, personally, as a resident, when I drive to Hurstville and I drive to surrounding areas, it's a it's a very long commute for myself, and um, so that's the first concern is traffic congestion that would come from the increased density, from high density and high building heights. Um, the other concern I have is parking on Cook Street during the day. You know, people park on Cook Street to catch a train. Both lane on the street, uh, we lose two lanes uh, just to parking, and even when tradesmen or People come to visit or nurses come to visit my parents. They can't find a parking at all. So, you know, with this development, uh, the concern is what will happen to parking. There won't be enough parking. The other concern is that the infrastructure, schools, roads, just won't be able to support the amount of overcrowding that would ensue. Uh, so that's the concern that I have. The other thing we have are concerned about is the village atmosphere of Motel. Motel has always been a village atmosphere. These are uh, high, you know, I, I, I'm seeing proposals that suggest uh, heights of up to six stories. I'm very concerned about that. Uh, it will destroy the village atmosphere. Um, so that's a concern. The other concern is, um, you know, uh, the, the sort of uh, the, the, the sort of support for this develop, uh, for high rise and a lot of dwellings has been economic activity, but I'm actually I uh, want to uh, encourage everyone to think that, think about this, because a lot of people come to shop in Mortdale because of its village atmosphere. Putting a lot of high rises and making it into concrete jungle will deter a lot of people from shopping in Mortdale. Uh, they will actually go to Westfield um, as an alternative, so they won't come to Mortdale. So, uh, so this. A bit of disadvantages, um, you know, if we're trying to stimulate economic activity. The other concern I have is about the density ratios. You know, um, just like, you know, in a house, you can only have so many people living in a house. The same principle applies to any sort of land or, you know, development and houses. You know, you've got to uh, conform to certain density ratios. This may push the density ratios to unsustainable levels. And as, uh, you know, uh, uh, relating to the other points that I mentioned about overcrowding, traffic congestion, parking, all these are concerns by the community and myself being a resident of Mordale. And I think, you know, there's other alternatives that exist to solve the problem that we're trying to solve as well. So I think there are other alternatives. It's better uh, public transport, uh, you know, allow more uh, duplex buildings to be built, changing uh, a few things. Um, so that's uh, my feedback as a resident of Mortdale. Uh, thank you very much, much Mr. Calais. Uh, uh, we will move on to our next submission, which I think is a written submission, which will be read by one of our council officers, Ms. McKinley. It's uh, by Mr. Neil, sorry, Neil Flanagan of um, on again ENV 028-22 on the Mortdale Master Plan, Ms. McKinley. Thank you. Could you clarify with exactitude what is the intended scope of the proposed traffic and parking study and how will this be utilised in future planning and development? Does this study intend to identify the existing baseline traffic count, i.e. vehicle counts and movements at a number of key control points at the edge of and within the town centre study area, identify the existing baseline parking allocation and type of parking, example, time limited, paid, public, private, on or off street, etc. Identify the existing pressure points within the town centre regarding capacity of road space, intersections, traffic flow and parking. Provide a projected increase of trips, all forms, and associated need for infrastructure upgrades or new roads, parking spaces at the ultimate development capacity afforded by the proposed new development opportunities under option one and at five year intervals leading up to the projected ultimate development year outline how these expected new or upgraded infrastructure items are to be provided, i.e. a developer contribution scheme and or 
proposed council works and what will be the expected cost to ratepayers. I note that the council report indicates an additional 2,925 metres squared GFA of non-residential floor space and an additional 332 dwellings under option one. Depending on how this is sliced and diced, I would anticipate that this would result in significant more than the 297 daily trips outlined in the original consultation documents. If council doesn't properly address future traffic and parking impacts, then rationally managing these impacts, then it is setting this centre up for future failure. Either the centre will exist in an environment of muddling along with no overall plan of where, when and how future traffic and parking problems are to be addressed. It is likely that initial developers will either be benefited or penalised depending on the development scenario and vice versa for later developers. Business and users are likely to see this centre as not being good for business if traffic and parking become a significant problem and they will leave avoid this centre. You are setting your development assessment team up for a whole world, world of pain in trying to impose reasonable and, develop, and relevant conditions on future development approvals. If these issues are not properly addressed strategically rather than reactionary on a DA by DA basis. At present, all this report states is that a traffic and parking study is to be undertaken. It gives no specific details as to what exactly it intends to address and how it will be used to inform future planning and development of this town centre. Personally, I think this is important information that should have been done beforehand, and it certainly needs to be undertaken before progressing any further. If it was done properly and upfront, then much of the backlash against the proposal may have been dampened if residents could see existing congestion and parking problems were going to be improved and there would be some benefit in the increased development afforded by the proposal. Neil Flanagan on behalf of John Flanagan. Thank you, Ms McKinley. That brings us to the end of our public forum tonight. The next item on the agenda is the confirmation of minutes from the previous meeting. Um, so I'd like to call for a motion to uh, move the minutes of the Environment and Planning meeting held on Monday the 8th of August. If someone would like to move that. Uh, moved by the Mayor, Councillor Catrus, and seconded by Councillor Marnie. All those in favour? Anyone against? Okay, we'll declare that carried. Uh, we have two items on the agenda, folks. The first item on the agenda is ENV 027-22, the annual update on progress towards net zero carbon emissions and the renewable energy targets. And before we hear from uh, one of our council officers on this, I'll call for a mover and a seconder. I'll move it. Uh, again, that's moved by Councillor Catrus. Would Councillor Money, you'd like to second this one? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ms Bishop, we're hearing from Mr Spooner tonight on this. Yes. Mr Spooner, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for all those in attendance. Um, this report presents our annual update in relation to progress towards net zero carbon emissions and renewable energy targets. Just going back in, in a bit of time, uh, the previous council back in 2020 made a number of significant recommendations in relation to these two matters. Um, none, of, none of least was which the council would be net zero um, carbon emissions by 2025 and that we would have renewable energy by 2025. Um, the other recommendations related to providing an annual report to the councils in September each year to provide the council with an update on how we're progressing towards those, those two significant uh, recommendations. Um, this report will talk through all of the council's emissions um, over the financial year and it talks about how we've actioned various recommendations and responses to reduce our carbon emissions. One of the most significant things that happened during this year was we entered into a, an agreement with an energy provider which commenced on the 1st of July 2022 to ensure that we had renewable energy at 100% um, at no additional cost to the organisation. So that was a significant achievement which we'll see in next year's report, approximately 73% reduction in carbon emissions from the organisation, which is a significant step. The other key issue that we looked at this year was working um, to reduce a lot of our street lights in our residential areas and also moving towards our main roads with LEDs. That will see us not only reduce um, our carbon output, but also save a significant financial uh, contributions to lighting, um, which we can then use to put to other 
uh, uses to reduce our carbon footprint. The recommendations in themselves are fairly straightforward. We're simply asking that the council would note the progress of where we're up to this year in relation to reducing our carbon footprint. Note the progress in achieving 100% renewable energy prior to 2025, which is significant in itself, three years ahead of schedule. And that we're also looking at um, a recommendation that might need some discussion. In the energy renewable energy scheme, um, energy providers who generate one giga, I think it's one giga, I can't remember the term, one gigawatt hour of electricity are, can able to have a, a what they call a, hang on, just check the report, large scale generation certificate. This is basically a an incentive scheme which is brought in by the federal government to encourage providers to to move towards renewable energy. So every time they generate it, that one gigabyte, there's a renewable energy um, certificate issued. And in the case for us, because prior to this year or part of this year, we were on a 20% renewable energy um, arrangement. We have generated a significant number of those um, large-scale generation certificates. Those certificates have a market value, and it's it's a bit like the share market, so the value will go up and down. Um, what we're suggesting is the council should sell those, um, and this is brokered through SES Rock. Um, any money that is sold through or any is retrieved through that sale process, we put into a reserve, so we can fund future initiatives to reduce our carbon outputs and to look in the future. Um, and when we come back to council in 2024, looking at how we're going to offset any of those emissions that we can't reduce by operational arrangements. So that would be the, the main recommendation that we would put that savings. And I think the report talks about this year, there's a, a we've approximately made about uh, $7,000 and next year we're looking at around about $89,000 in the sale of those certificates, which will be then put into that reserve so we can fund future initiatives. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Spooner. Before we move to our second, uh, or move in our second, uh, councillors, do we have any questions for Mr. Spooner on this? I'd like to say so. I don't want to, I don't have any Not a question, you'd just like to speak to it? Yeah. Sure. No other questions from anyone else first? Okay, thank you. I'm Mr. not Mayor. going to actually repeat everything that the officer, Andrew Spooner, has said, but I do want to add an amendment, and it's part D, and I would like to indicate that the council congratulates and extends, extends their appreciation to all the council officers who are involved in this um, progress of um, progress towards net zero carbon emissions and renewable energy targets. If I could put that amendment, and I think it, it's well deserved. I think um, Ms. Um, Merrill, um, yeah, um, directed it and your, um, you as the manager, Mr. Andrew Spookers, you've done an excellent job um, to actually bring our, um, bring our benchmarks ahead by about three years, um, and to actually really focus on what the council wanted you to do and what the council did. You actually have extended your um, focus to over the, the actual the expectations of the council councillors, and we owe you a vote of thanks, and we owe all the council officers that dealt with this um, a vote of thanks. And I think it's much appreciated, and I think it would be much appreciated by all the, our local government area people who are very concerned with the, the, um, um, the carbon footprint, uh, especially the council, council's carbon footprint. And it's a very detailed and, and a very excellent report. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mani, are you happy to accept that amendment? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Money, would you like to speak to it as well? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, any other councillors have any other questions or comments before we, we put it to a vote? I would just like to congratulate Mr Spooner and your staff as well. I mean, it's great to see that um, there has been this level of emission reduction. It's incredibly well done and it's a very, very good news story, this one. Okay, councillors, we'll put this one to a vote. All those in favour? Anyone against? 
All right, we'll declare that one carried. Okay, we will move to the next item on the agenda, which is ENB 028-22, the Mortdale Master Plan, consideration of options and preparations of planning proposal. Uh, before we go any further, we would not need to call frame mover and a seconder. Um, okay, uh, would I be able to move it with an amendment? You'd like to move it with an amendment, Councillor Jamison. Okay, would you like to, is that up on the screen? That's your amendment? I believe so. Do you want to move it? Is someone, because I'll get you to read it so that people can actually Maybe not read all of it, but well, you probably do need to read all of it. It's, it's quite lengthy. I think people need to know what it contains. And I'd also like to call for a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Money. Councillor Jamison, can you read out what you're... Uh, um, you actually need to stand up, sorry, if that's okay. okay. Thank you. Um, the amended recommendation. A, that Council notes the submissions received during the public exhibition of the draft Northdale Master Plan. B, that Council does not proceed with the exhibited draft Mortdale Master Plan. C, that Council prepares a revised Mortdale Master Plan based on the conditions contained in Option 1 as detailed in the report with the following amend amendments and endorses the Master Plan to go on public exhibition for 28 days. 1. Revise the height limit in the B2 zone in Pitt Street and Mort's Road to four storeys with a two-storey street wall upper wall setback in the locations where it is currently proposed for five and six storeys. 2. Revise the height limit in the council-owned Cook Street car park to four storeys. 3. Rezone the following existing R4 properties to B1 with a four-storey height limit. Subpoint 9 Street, Mortdale Street, 50 to 54 Pitt Street, Mortdale, 56 Pitt Street, Mortdale, 21, 23 and 25 Macquarie Street. 4. Remove the proposed rezoning to R3 and R4. 5. Incorporate public domain benefits into the Mortdale Master Plan by updating and exhibiting the Mortdale Local Centre Master Plan public domain upgrade works to reflect the revised and updated Mortdale Master Plan. D, that council prepares a traffic, transport and parking study to assess the potential impacts of land use uplift on the existing network and to develop mitigation strategies to accommodate the expected growth under option one with the amendments outlined above. E, that a further report be prepared and submitted to council at the conclusion of the exhibition period to allow consideration of any submissions received and the findings of the traffic, transport and parking study and any resulting amendments to the revised Mortdown Master Plan 2022. That council adopt the revised Mortdown Master Plan 22 with 22 with any amendments and submits the revised Mortdale Master Plan 2022 to the Department of Planning Environment for endorsement as a strategic study. G, that all persons who made a submission to the draft Mortdale Master Plan be advised of council decision. And H, that council does not uh, proceed with a draft affordable housing contribution scheme in the Mortdale Local Centre at this stage and investigate a scheme that applies across the whole LGA. Thank you, Councillor Jamison. Councillor Marnie, did you, you seconded this, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you want to speak to it? Thank you, Madam Chair. I was Chair. actually, no, we're not going to do that, sorry. I'm just thinking, just actually reading it out. Um, councillors, Councillor Jamison has made um, quite a significant amendment to the uh, recommendation that's on the business paper. Would anyone like to ask any questions of the yes, director I'd like or? To ask questions. Um, Councillor Jamison, you indicated in your motion that it's actually, it reflects um, option one. It actually, from what I can see, and I need to ask um, the director some more questions, it's actually reflecting option two, is it not? Four stories right through. Um, it, well, it has some amendments, it includes the RSL. Well, so how do the am amendments actually change option two? 
Could you please clarify that? I referred to the changes that it made in option one. Sorry, that's the one I was referring to. Sorry. So the option one, my amendment revolves, involves option one and amendments to option one. Um, I'll direct my questions to the director. Um, maybe you can answer the question, uh, Ms. Uh, Merrill. Um, what, yeah, I just got this and I'm trying to get my head around it, so could you please tell me um, the rezone the existing R4 properties to B1 for the four straw story height limit at those addresses. Where actually are those addresses? Can we can someone pinpoint these in there, please? Is it just the RSL site or those addresses? Um, so are we talking only about the RSL site with those four addresses? And sorry, Ms. Ms. Uh, yeah. Okay, through you, Madam Chair, to the, to the Mayor. So the first, let, let's just go through the properties. If that that's in the resolution, is that what you'd like me to do? Sorry? So. Go yes. through number nine Pitt Street yes. is um, is a uh, currently a residential flat building that the zoning is an anom anomaly. It is surrounded by business zones. So what this resolution is saying make it a uh, a B two zone. It's already built out. It's already built out. That okay. is correct. What about then, fifty to fifty four? Fifty to fifty four. 56, 23, 24, 25 and Quarry Street, they are the RSL sites. They are the RSL sites. Right. And what's being proposed here for the RSL so it's only one which is existing. I just want to clarify this because I we have to vote on this. Um, what, I'm, what I'm clarifying here is that 9 Pitt Street is already a four story. That, that is correct. So it's no change. Uh, and 50 to 54 and all those other ones, they're the RSL. Are they included? I just want to clarify, is the RSL not included in option one? Only part. Uh, only only, part. Only, I'll just check with Ms McMahon. It's only part of the it site. It is included. Only part of the site. Could you tell me which part? Through you, Madam Chair, the site facing uh, Pitt Street, some yeah. of the car park is included in, in the um, so option one. And what? In option one, you want you're indicating the RSL going to six stories in Pitt Street. Yes, that's correct. In option one, but it's only the car park, the actual uh, residential flat building that fronts the Strand and Pitt Street, and the RSL club that fronts Macquarie and the Strand remains in the so residential zone. So what you're saying zone. is only the back part, which is only the part goes to six stories yes. in option one. Yes, and the um, the front of it in Macquarie Place remains at four storeys. Yes, that's correct. Macquarie the Place is incorporated, but it's incorporated at six plus four in the front of it. The RSL building itself remains in the residential zoning. Yes. Part of the car park for the RSL fronting Pitt Street goes to oh, a B2 zoning. It's about six storeys. Yes. But um, do you have any idea of, of what floor space ratio you're proposing? There? Is it just 1.5 to 1? No, we were seeking a 2.5 to, to 1 in option 1. Yeah. Um, Councillor Jamison, um, you've indicated in the um, um, in the uh, uh, in your proposal a B1, maybe it should be a B2, I presume. It's, it's, it's B2. B2. Sorry. Uh, a four story height. Did you have any idea of what floor space ratio you were going to propose? Uh, no, but I've got that in my speech to if. Yep, no, but I'm asking you. I, I didn't go by floor space ratios, I did it by um, heights. And four stories only. Yep. Okay. Um, to the director again. To the director again. Um, we have here now based on what you what you have read here is there any change any what changes do you see what major changes that makes the master plan 
uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the, the Mayor. Uh, what makes it a master plan in relation to the resolution? Well, it, it's moving towards a master plan is they're asking the master plan to have public domain improvements. With, Can with, you justify public domain improvements if there's nothing being proposed? Uh, it, it will be difficult to get public domain improvements as a result of the uplift. Uh, there may be the public domain improvements without doing that analysis work will need to be funded through development contributions when development well, does occur. Assume, assume, and that's what I think that Councillor um, Jamison is looking at, assume that the floor space ratios remain the same, 1.5 to 1, as they are now, which I presume what's going to happen. Um, assume that they remain the same, where would you get seven section, section 711 development contributions? Uh, through you, through Madam Chair to the Mayor, um, the current, there's no height within the Malt Down yeah, so area at the moment. The right. There is a, a 1.5 is to 1 FSR. There is not development activity that has occurred within the centre at that FSR. Mm -hmm. So it, it it would need to be there would be some need to be some drive by the development sector to come in and develop at that rate. The analysis work that we did for the uh, draft master plan indicated that that 1.5 is to one in the business zone, given the fragmented ownership and small lots that occurs would not be sufficient to activate development. So there That's would be no public, analysis. So there'd be no point in upgrading the public, what's, what's, what's in this motion. There's no point in up, upgrading the centre master plan public domain. What would you What would you actually say to, to the Department of Planning or even to the, um, uh, let's say the RSL when it goes before the Sydney South Planning Panel? What would you? Say to them, well, what are we going to do in terms of public domain expenditure on this? Well, that they would, that they would be, I mean, we collect contributions for the whole city. So it would be, and then in our schedule of works, once we do the, the, the master plan or if it becomes a planning proposal, we would amend, which we would do, we would amend the contributions plan to identify works that would need to occur within Mortdale, let's say traffic works, and then we it would just go on the work schedule and we would over time collect funds to do those works. Well, Goey, can I just ask you a further question on this traffic uh, and parking study? If everything's remaining the same, what traffic and parking study are you going to do? Uh, the parking, we would need to take, let's, let's just go on the basis that this uh, uh, Councillor Jamison's recommendation gets up. Uh, we have done a traffic study uh, that we did for the for the master plan, uh, so we have done some some analysis there. But of course, that's on significantly higher residential rates and higher commercial rates. Uh, we would redo the traffic study based on the current road network. So what you're saying is, this traffic study is not dependent on this. Uh, master plan that's been moved by Councillor Jamison, it's very dependent on just an everyday occurrence, which you probably would like to do just to ensure that something's happening in Mortdale. Uh, uh, look, you know, uh, I'm finding it hard to understand Mr. Mayor, why would you spend $50,000 on a traffic the study? The traffic study then would look at the whole capacity when the site is developed, sorry, when the whole precinct's developed. It will probably be done on a a five-year basis on a 10-year basis, like we usually do with traffic modelling uh, based on a base case, development activity within five years' time, development activity in 10 years' time, and then what the mitigating okay. measures would be. All right. However, there, there isn't... There isn't much. There, there, is no, there isn't any change. You can do that development now. Okay. And now the other question that I've got is, when does the RSL, do you think, go to the Sydney South Planning Panel? Uh, from our discussion today, it's an understanding that it will go to determination whether it proceeds to a gateway in November. Okay. Now, what I'm also going to ask you is, this this is going this is uh, if this goes on exhibition, 
then uh, we can hear from the community. I understand there are a lot of out, a lot of people out there that are seriously concerned, and I'm concerned too. I'm not saying that I'm not concerned, but we've got to line, line up everything to not disadvantage the community. And I say that in all honesty, because a master plan that is a non-master plan does disadvantage the community. So basically, there's nothing to go on. And this master plan might be a little bit difficult, but I will ask you a further question. It's got to go to the, um, once, it's, once we receive the comments from the, um, uh, commu from the community, if this goes on exhibition, I presume if that's the case, then we have to decide as to what, we, what we're going to do. Now, in this case, it goes to the Department of Planning, and it will also go, it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be subject of a report that goes to the RSL Sydney South Planning Council. Now, what's your view on both those? Do you have a view? Uh, can I just clarify that? You're asking me, so we, the master plan goes on exhibition, we receive comments from the community, we come back, the council adopts the master plan, and then as per the recommendation, we send that to the mm. Department of Planning, asking it to become a strategic mm. stuff. That's the first question? Yeah. Yes, that is the process that, as per the resolution, we would follow. Mm. That will take us some months, um, and it may not be till early next year that we bring the master plan back to you for consideration following doing a traffic study. Um, yeah. Well, firstly, we have to prepare the master plan. Um, yeah. So it will take us some time before we get it on exhibition. We will hear everybody's comments. Then it will come back to you early next, I would think early next year. Let's take In a... relation to, yeah. sorry, the RSL, uh, I guess it depends on the, uh, it, it will depend on where this, report goes and whether it is in this recommendation is endorsed by council. We as council staff will do our submission to the planning panel. Uh, that is due next week. We will then, the plan, panel will take that into account. So we will then, of course, depends what, depending what happens tonight and next on the 26th, we'll, we will amend making sure that our submission reflects the position of council, but it will also have the issues that have been identified by staff um, with that proposal. Okay, um, so it's quite likely that this master plan might not be ready for the merit-based assessment by the Sydney South Planning Panel. You are correct, it won't be ready. Okay, so what, what does the, uh, what does the, um, what do you think the planning panel will take into consideration? Uh, without knowing yeah. what the, the planning, because the, not knowing the process that the planning panel will look at, but they look at two things. They look at yeah. the strategic merit of the site. So with the strategic merit of the site, they have got a draft master plan that has been, that was endorsed by council, went to the community. Uh, I'm assuming the panel will also look and take into account consideration of what happens tonight and on the 26th in relation to how the progression of the master plan works. That's the first thing they'll look at. They'll also look at the LSPS, they'll look at the local strategic planning statement. They may also look at the, the district plan, which talks about the planning principles, which talks around about development on a railway line. That's the strategic context. They will also look at the site specific components of the site, um, its height, the placement of height, they will look at the interface with the surrounding area, they'll look at traffic generation, uh, they may look at components that are about design regarding apartment, how the building works with uh, apartment design, they'll look at the, as I say, how activation, um, and they'll look at, as I say, the placement of the heights in relation to, to, the, uh, to the surrounding area. Thank you. Um, look, I've put a lot of questions to you, <laughs> Director. I just want to get a few things clear before. I'm actually thinking that, uh, but I'll I'll let the um, I'll let the Councillor Jamison speak on this, and then I've got an idea of what should be done. Thank you, Councillor Jamison. 
Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, and thank you to the community for coming out to support your community. The last few days have been extremely challenging. This is a topic I feel particularly passionate about and I know the community does too. The responsibility I have in representing them both generally and here tonight is one I take very seriously and I would like to put forward the following amendment. As an elected representative of my community who, has vote, who was voted in because of my stance on this very issue, I am here tonight putting forward the request of the community. Thank you to my teams and to the council staff who have been supportive and worked with me to get us to this point. A Mortdale Centre master plan will provide the certainty the community wants and needs. The Deputy Mayor's motion back in, I think, April included coming back to the community as soon as possible with a revised, more palatable master plan. Instead, we are now being presented with four options, three of which are planning proposal and one is the previously exhibited Mortdale master plan. The Mortdale Village community has already seen the results of overdevelopment. We've seen it unfold in both Hurstville and Cogra. We've seen it with the local Ellen subway development. This is not what our community wants for Mortdale. What they want is more sustainable, considered and reasonable development. I was in attendance at the Save Mortdale Village seminar where I spoke to town planners who pointed out the unique and vibrant features of Mortdale Village, despite it not being on a main road. In fact, it is surrounded by a single lane bridge and a two lane underpass. These traffic flow restrictions, similar to an island, are unusual for a shopping centre. I ask, what would the impact be on this area if we overdeveloped this island? What kind of gridlock would we, would we create by lumping high rise towers in this space? Time and time again, the local community has come to me saying they haven't been heard. I am urging you tonight to listen to their concerns, to listen to their ideas and to listen to their feedback. The community is not against development, but they do not want overdevelopment. I am here to pass on their feedback and I'm relying on the support and reasoning of my colleagues to ensure that feedback is heard. I have also been told by the local member of parliament would, that he would be able to provide his support in writing. While I have not seen this letter as of yet, I'm extremely hopeful that it will be presented tonight. Yeah. When and if it is, it will provide a great deal of additional support to his local community as it is ultimately his colleagues in New South Wales government pushing for more development in our suburb. The community acknowledges the need for an uplift, for an increase in affordable housing and a revitalisation of the Mortdale Shopping Centre. We support a considered, planned and reasonable approach to all of these factors, which is why we are calling for a revised Mortdale Master Plan. A revised master plan would ensure that required infrastructure is factored into all development. It would provide consistency across, across the local government area and establish a well thought out overarching plan, not this piecemeal approach where rules keep changing to suit the needs of cash hungry developers. A revised master plan would provide a new renewed vision of the for the entire area and would encompass the two largest commercial sites in Mortdale, the Mortdale RSL and the council car park. We believe it was a compromise to extend the commercial area to the RSL, a belief being it would allow a decent development of the, of the site. The local community wants a win-win for the RSL, RSL site, not for it to be turned into the Barangaroo of South Sydney, we have played fairly, we ask the RSL developers to play fairly too. This is why we are calling for no, no more than four. Our reasons for limiting development to four storeys, including the, on the RSL site and the council's Cook Street car park are justified on the following planning grounds. The existing B2 zone with a floor spray ratio of 1.5 to one can only achieve a maximum two floor height limit. The community's urban planner has confirmed this. By increasing the floor space ratio to two to one or above, we can realistic, realistically uplift in the existing centre by an extra two floors for shop top housing all along Pitt Street and Mortz Road, therefore increasing our housing stock and giving another choice of housing types. Three, by encouraging and rezoning the RSL site and the council car park, the two biggest landholders in the 2B zone, will meet council's commercial centre strategy. Part one, Mortdale by creating an additional 6,600 square metres of commercial floor space by 2036 
36, which helps create jobs growth as required by the commercial centre strategy. The previous master plan prepared by external consultants was to create an additional 16,000 square metres of floor space, which would have led to an oversupply and have dire consequences for a lot of the exi existing shop holders. For the additional shop top housing will also assist Council in meeting its housing targets for 2036 set by the New South Wales State Government. Five, it will also give certainty to the landowners in Mortdown and will lead to a greater uptake for redevelopment to help Council reach its short-term housing targets between 2021 to 2026. In summary, Council can argue to the Department of Planning and Environment that a revised master plan is the appropriate course of action because A, the Council is on course to meet their housing targets set down by the New South Wales State Government to reach 14,000 new dwellings by 2036. B, by expanding the P2 zone to incorporate the two largest land holdings, the RSL site and Cook Street Car Park, would allow Council to meet its commitments and targets set out in the commercial centre strategies by creating an additional 6,600 square metres of commercial floor space and creating jobs and growth. Finally, it will give certainty to all shop and landowners within the B2 zone, which will enable them to increase their yield in both commercial and residential floor space. We are voted in to represent the wants and wishes of our local community. They have told us loudly and repeatedly what they are seeking. It's now up to us to make sure it happens. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jamison. Um, whilst you were speaking, the director has indicated that there's something that you may wish to include in your uh, amendment in dot point I, where you've got revised the height limit in the P2 zone, B2 zone in Pitt Street and Morts Road to four storeys with a two storey street wall with upper levels set back. Um, we'd need to include a statement along the lines an appropriate floor space ratio that reflects this height. Would you be willing to to add that into? Yep, sure. Okay. Thank you. We might just, and Councillor Marnie, you seconded that too, so you'd be willing to accept it. As well, Councillor Jamison has just spoken at length on this, and I would like to go to Councillor Marnie for him to speak on, the, on this item as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Morton Master Plan was the greatest concern for hundreds of Mortdale Ward residents, those who spoke to me at pre-poll late last year. Ever since, the sentiment has been repeated by countless residents from both Mortdale and Pecos wards who have called, emailed or stopped me in the street. People are intimidated by the high-rise development on the quiet eastern side of the railway line and are concerned that they might get more of it. Traffic jams are not uncommon in Mortdale due to its narrow streets and angle parking. Around eight years ago, peak hour train service and stopping at Mortdale was slashed. Current residents are asking how old and new residents will be able to get in and out of this suburb and onto the trains. With Council having met its current housing targets and only need to achieve around a thousand more dwellings across the LGA by 2036, the provision of a four storey limit would appear to be a fair contribution towards that target for Mortdale. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Money. Um, Councillor Jamison and Councillor Money, the director is just highlighting that the addresses that are included in this amended motion are not correct. So we're just looking at those now as to. I think it's probably best, Ms. Bishop, if you. Um, um, we have just clarified what is the the residential, what is the street address for the RSL. Um, let me go through. Pitt Street, well, nine Pitt Street, we can stay. It's an anomaly. Uh, but yes, we can change that to fix up the planning. So it's a B2, that's fine. 50 to 54 Pitt Street is already a B2 zoning. So that probably can be removed from your resolution. The RSL is 56 Pitt. Yes, that will stay in. But Macquarie Street, uh, one of the sites was left out. It's 19 to 25 Macquarie Street. So are you happy for that to be amended in yes, that way? Yes, thank Leah? you. And Councillor Marnie. Can I just point to Leah, please? Sure, Hi, Director. Um, Macquarie Street's actually more Macquarie Place, I just realised. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay, councillors, um, would anyone like to speak against this? Not so much against it, but a possible, um, a possible review of what the situation is. Um, 
councillors, I can see that this committee is made up of me and five other people. You can also see that um, this is a very, very serious and sensitive issue and other councillors, and that's another one, two, three, four councillors, have made it their job to come in. Five, five sorry, <laughs> five have made it their job to come in and listen to the debate. I think this. I can understand. I can understand where um, Councillor Jamison's coming from, and I can also. I, I also understand um, the concern the community has. We've heard from Councillor Jamison. We've also got a notice of motion here, which basically from my viewpoint, and I think that's something that I'll need to discuss with the, or we need to discuss with the director. It's actually option two. Would that be the case, as, as you said? So it's actually option two, it's not option one. So it's, I'm getting mixed messages, I'm getting confused messages. Having said that, I think it's most appropriate that we defer this to the full council meeting. We've got other councillors here that have to make a decision. I'm happy for this motion to be circulated for all the councillors so that when when they so they look at it, think about it, ask all the questions that they need to ask, ask all the questions. These other councillors don't have a, have a vote, don't have any voting power in this committee and I think we owe it to them to defer it so they can make a decision based on what's been written here. So this motion goes to everybody they uh, and um, and the questions can come in loud and strong to the director. So I'm moving for a deferral. Okay Mr Mayor but um, the process for that would be I think we would either have to amend the amendment to move for a deferral or vote on uh, Councillor Jamison's motion and if that's lost then go to yours. So I'm, I'm moving a deferral. Are you foreshadowing that or are you? I'm So you're moving an amendment? Yeah. Okay. Well I'm happy to second that. Okay, so the process for that, where we will go to from here, would be. Uh, I think we ask for assistance from. The I think we might get some instructions from the gen acting general manager, if that's okay. Through you, Madam Chair, I think it's a foreshadow motion that we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually moving it. It's not a foreshadowed motion. Yeah. We had a motion yes. the council to be moved and seconded it. So you can move an amendment to yeah. that motion. Yeah. But this doesn't seem to be an amendment. It's a new motion. It's a different motion. And therefore, well, I think I would have to agree with the chair that the motion is defeated. Then your motion would come for the um, I think that's the way that we need to do it because Councillor Jamison and Councillor Money have moved the motion unless you're going to move the amendment to their amendment and I'm not sure technically if we can do that. Can we, Ms Weatherly? Well, this is not an amendment. It's the motion. Mm. It's different from the opposite. Yeah. That's the motion in front of the Council. Mm. Someone's been moved an amendment to that motion. But what I think the Mayor has moved is the different motion yeah. Or the amendment motion before. I mean, for an amendment, for example, would change some of the impressions or the heights or whatever. This is a move that has been completely deferred. Well, I'll foreshadow it then. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Right. Well, given that's where we've landed, I think um, the next step will be that we'll put it to the councillors who are on the committee. And just for those in the gallery who might be aware that there are a number of, of other councillors sitting around the table tonight, they're not actually members of the committee, so they don't actually have a vote. Uh, that is why Councillor Catrus has uh, attempted to move it to the full council meeting so all councillors can participate. There will be only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of us actually with the capacity to vote on this tonight. 
Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put Councillor Jamison's motion, all those in favour. Oh, no, actually, we're going to have to go around, aren't we, for this? I'd yep. like to talk to it. Uh, I'd like to um, just clarify an issue, if that's OK. What did you want to clarify, sorry? I need to clarify. Um, no, it's OK. Let it go. Okay. Ms McKinley, did you want to? Sure. Mr Mayor, your vote, please. Yes. Councillor Lansbury? Against. Councillor Borg? For the motion. Councillor Jamison? For the motion. Councillor Marnie? For. Councillor Wang? Against. That's three votes for, three votes against. This is not something I'm really comfortable to do. I'm actually going to exercise my casting vote on this and um, therefore declare the motion is lost. Councillor Catrice's motion becomes, or foreshadowed motion becomes the motion, which is basically to defer to the full council meeting. Sure. Seconded. Sorry? Or seconded by Councillor. And Look. I'm happy to second. Oh, I'm happy to second it again. Yeah, what did you? Sorry, Look, Councillor Wang. Sorry, Mr. Let that. me just be quite clear of this. I did not vote against Councillor Jamison's um, uh, motion because I disagreed with what she had there. As a matter of fact, I totally agree with the four stories going straight up there, up to a certain point in um, up to a certain point in Watts Road. I think the four story could be could be accommodated up to more. What happens around the railway is what I need to sort of resolve in my mind, and I'm sure what happens around the railway is what the other councillors have to resolve in their mind. Now, again, what I'm trying to say is we have to do what's right for the residents, and you may think of the residents are probably getting a false idea of where I stand on this. I, I stand on the fact that it has to be a village atmosphere. I stand on the fact that it has to be also a master plan that's palatable, that has some sort of planning principles, not something that's basically saying what we're really doing here is doing nothing. And if you send that off to any learned professional and say, that's our master plan, they can look at us and say, really? That's your master plan. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is that Councillor Jamison, I mean, I'm quite happy, as I said, Councillor Jamison's notice of motion can be circulated to all the councillors because obviously it's going to be put up again for some reason, I presume. Maybe in a different form, I don't know. But I want the councillors that took the trouble to come to this meeting, which they would not normally do, that took the trouble to seriously consider the impact of Councillor Jamison's um, motion and to act seriously ask questions from the director in these next two weeks so they can properly make up their minds as to what they're going to support. So I appreciate that you've gone to a lot of trouble, Councillor Jamison, and I appreciate that the people out there have gone to a lot of trouble to turn up here. Yes, we are listening. Whether you believe it or not, yes, we are listening. But I want to direct attention to him. What I want to direct, I want to direct the councillors, I want to direct the councillors in such a way that it does make a proper impact on the planning panel, the planning panel that's going to be assessing the RSL site and the state government that's going to be assessing current. So that's one of the, one of the major reasons why I'm deferring it to go to a full council meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Wang, did you want to speak? Yeah. So, um, first, I live in at the Outerly, but I normally, uh, sometimes I walk from the Mordale train station home. So I really love the Mordale's atmosphere, you know, the village feel. So I know that area well. Um, so f first, I'd like to ask a question to your Madam Chair, to the Director. So if the mass plan, if we go through uh, didn't get a pass at the, you know, the planning panel, what will happen to the ISL uh, DA? So just so I'm clear on that, yeah, yeah. if, if, if there's no mass plan, 
what will happen to the ICA? Oh, okay, if if there is no um, master plan, as I sort of explained before, yep. they they will look at the planning panel looks at two things. It looks at strategic merit. Yeah. So that looks at the plans that not only the state government have in place, but the local strategic planning statement. They would probably look at what was in the draft master plan, but they would also understand that that draft master plan may or may not have been endorsed by council and the community concerns. That's the bigger picture. And then they will also look at um, the site-specific merits of the application, which I talked about, is interface with the surrounding area, yeah. where the height sits on the site, how it works at the street, um, traffic, those types of elements as well. Oh, so, so right now, the, the sorry, the draft master plan uh, does not include the all or none of the ISA or site, right? Or just part of it? Through you, Madam Chair, option one includes, doesn't include the RSL site, um, but the option um, yeah. amendments that have been posed um, by Councillor Jemison as amended do include the RSL site. Uh, and I'll just add there, the draft master plan that was exhibited yep. included, the, included the RSL site at six stories. Six stories, yeah. So, okay, so if, if the amended plan even gets through, so we have the six story RSL, right? And, and if the, so that's, uh, so that's also like uh, my concern. So if we want to put forward a good master plan, so we need to have a good marriage, and get a past and have a proper governance around the model ISL. So that's why the lots, uh, I share pretty much all the concerns from Councillor Jameson, but I'm just worried about the feasibility of the uh, amended uh, master plan. So, so that's why I support to defer it, just give everybody more thoughts and more time to think about and more time to communicate and more time to speak about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wang. Did anybody want to speak against this? The deferral? No? Okay. Well, if you'll indulge me, I'd actually like to say a few words about this. Um, I appreciate the effort that Councillor Jamison and her colleagues have gone to put this forward. Um, I too don't believe we should go down the road of it being a planning proposal. I think we need to provide the community have called for us to uh, proceed with a master plan because it's more of a statutory, has more statutory weight. It does have the additional um, public domain aspects to it. I have concerns with what's being proposed though in as far as uh, dot point I, I, I and I, I, I. I, ju I just think need more work needs to be done on that and I think there is far too much to be considered by this very small group of councillors. And it's very interesting to me that we've got um, the additional five councillors in the room that are not on the committee. So clearly it's it's been of great interest to them too. I think it's too big an issue for us to be dealing with tonight. Having said that, I very much appreciate hearing from everybody who's attended tonight and spoken to us and who's been in contact with us in the last few days. We hear you. We do not want to be in the position of ruining the village atmosphere of Hawkdale. But we also need to be mindful that we are constantly under pressure. And ever since I've been on council going back all those years, we've always been under pressure to increase density and capacity. And I've, I'm concerned that what has been put forward here tonight might not increase capacity, so therefore nobody is going to take it up. And if it's been reflecting what the existing FSR and height, although there's never been a height actually in, in, in place, no one has taken it up in the last 20 years to revitalise Mort's Road. Who's going to do it now with no incentive? I'm not talking about high-rise. I don't want to see a replica of, of Hurstville in Mort Dalian in our suburbs. That's something I will never advocate. And I think anybody who has ever seen my voting record on councillors not would know that I normally vote against things which are detrimental to the community. Um, and the, the one, the ex, the master plan that went out on exhibition last year, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't comfortable with it. I was very uncomfortable with it. And I'm not sorry that we're back at this point now, we can actually change it. But to do that, we need to get that back out, get submissions from you in the community, although we've already heard from you loudly and clearly. I think the best way for us 
to progress this is for it to be deferred to the next council meeting. I'll ask that um, the director ensures that this particular amendment does get out to all of our councillors so they've got, if we can do that this bit in the next day or so, so they've got time to digest it in the next two weeks. But more importantly, I'm concerned that it needs more work. I actually really do think it needs more work. And, you know, coming from the perspective of we're hearing that housing and rental, the rental crisis, I don't want to be the one that, that shuts the door to any more development that's going to increase housing choice and perhaps provide um, a different array of housing, more townhouses. We don't have to have all apartment buildings. By removing the, uh, the capacity for R3, that's what we're doing here. I'm not comfortable with doing that. There are certainly elements in there I'm very comfortable with, but I'm not, I think we need to work on this and all of the councillors as a group of um, however many there may be at the meeting, I think we may have at least one declared interest and we, we do have a vacancy currently in Mortdale. I want to hear from the Mortdale councillors and the former Mortdale councillor before we make a decision on this scale. So please bear with us community. Um, and I'm, I'm going to encourage the councillors sitting around the horseshoe now to support Councillor Catrus, the mayor's deferral. And it's not because we don't support the intent of it. We do support the intent, but we need to work together as a group to get the best possible outcome. So councillors, that's enough for me. Uh, Councillor Catrus. Yes, just one comment. I just uh, spoke to, uh, to another councillor. And he, they, I mean, obviously they've come in to listen. And then they say, is there anyone who can get some sort of briefing before it comes up? And I know it's a lot of work, and I know you haven't got staff, you're very short staff, so. Look, Mr. Mayor, I have briefed the council on the options. I'm happy to do it again. Um, maybe what we can do it is it prior to the meeting. On, um, on, the, that, yeah. on, on the, I'll have to talk with the, uh, our general manager, um, that maybe we can do a briefing at six o'clock on the evening of, on the evening of the council meeting. And what we might do is we will, uh, to help the councillors, I will uh, put in illustration form. Um, uh, councillor and councillor Jamison and councillor Marnie's uh, proposal. Okay, uh, can I just get clarification? Is it the, all the options you want us me to workshop again, or is it just? Well, I think I think the option that uh, Councillor Jamison has put to us. Yes. I think we need a, a lot more information on that, and uh, and I think maybe option one. Option one and Councillor Jamison, and then what option, was? Because option option two is very much the, the motion. Okay, we'll we'll have those available, but I will book it in. Uh, no, it's, we'll find a time. We'll find a time. Yeah, because we have a special council meeting ready to go at six o'clock on that evening for the election of the deputy mayor, deputy mayor and so on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, is there any more discussion on this? Okay. Well, I think that we will um, put it to the vote, Miss McKinley, if we could. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, your vote, please. Four. Councillor Lansbury, four. Councillor Borg, four. Councillor Jamison, four. Councillor Marnie, four. Councillor Wang, four. Six votes unanimous. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, councillors, for um, your participation tonight. And thank you so much to everybody who's attended in the gallery. As I said, it's great to see people back in here again participating. And please don't be disheartened that we didn't actually land on something entirely. We will, we will get there. We absolutely will get there. But we've got to make sure that we do it right. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And that's the, the final item on the agenda. So. Uh, We'll, we'll call it and I will close the meeting at 8.22 and thank you to everyone for coming.